Back on the road again. Basically, this morning I need to install this power hub. It doesn't look like it's possible or no. No, I'm not based on it now. I looked on a map and I, I read somewhere that you could uh, like take a motorbike around some of the gravel roads around these ways. So uh, I'm out in the middle of nowhere. Basically, I'm kind of aimlessly driving down uh, gravel roads trying to find a place to camp for the night. I bumped into a guy on the side of the road, I pulled over and he basically gave me directions to come out here. Nothing quite beats the feeling of putting on wet motorcycle gear in the morning. Oh, it's cold. So it's the morning of day four. It's been quite pleasant staying out uh, in this unnamed forest. It's been very peaceful, no one around, apart from the, uh, the forestry that's going on across the road this morning. Had a pretty good sleep last night, uh, and now I'm gonna push off up to Snowdonia. It's about a two, two hour drive. I might pop into a small Italian village on the way up, can't quite remember the name of it, but I'm going to, yeah, look that up when I get reception. Can't say I'm going to miss these midges though. The Italian village I had in mind was Port Marion, 60 miles north. Time to sit back and enjoy the Welsh countryside. I don't want to pass there. Hi there. Um, I've just parked over there. Do I just pay for a few hours or? Yeah, just yourself. Just myself, yeah. Cool. Thank you, mate. Thank you. Port Marion is a small Italian inspired village situated on the west coast of Wales. It was designed by architect Sir Clough Williams Ellis in the 1920s and was built in two stages, finishing in 1976. His goal was to pay tribute to the atmosphere of the Mediterranean and build a village that integrated naturally with the surrounding environment. Apparently, it is the sixth most romantic location in Britain. Well, I quite like that little town. It was, uh, it was very quaint. My plan was to stay in Snowdonia tonight and probably tomorrow night. However, the weather is looking a bit average, uh, particularly tomorrow and that's when I wanted to do uh, Snowden. So I wanted to hike up Crib Gok. However, if it's rainy and windy up there, it's pretty sketchy, so it's not worth the risk. So what I'm gonna do is I think I'm gonna carry on up to Chester where I'm picking up my uh, charging device for the bike and book some accommodation up there somewhere. And then I look to come back through Snowdonia after Scotland, so on my way back down. And yeah, look to do Crib Gok because I'll be able to get some sweet shots up there. just arrived at Chester. It was time to pick up the charging unit for my motorbike, which had been delivered to the Amazon collection hub at Morrison's. Hopefully this device would finally allow me to charge my camera gear off the motorbike while driving. Hi there. Yeah. Um, where would I find the click and collect? If you go so, back to your car, I'll get someone around there. Thank you. Hi there. Uh, click and collect for Logan. Logan? Yeah. Um, do you know which shop it was for? Because we haven't got any, any other click and collects. Oh really? Unfortunately. Um, did it say what shop to go to? Amazon Hub Locker Leeds, Morrison's, Saltney. Oh, is it a click and collect for Morrison's or is it for Amazon? Amazon. 
Ah, right, that's it then. As you go inside, okay. the pharmacy's right there and then past that's the Amazon hub. Oh, right. And it's all in the lockers. Oh, I see. It's all, it's all there. Ah, cool. Sorry, we thought you meant a Morrison's <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll take some though. <laughs> Thank you so much. There we are, no worries. Nearly scored some free groceries. Looks like I have to go back inside. Ah, there it is. That was easy. Third time lucky, if this doesn't work, God help me. The day was drawing to a close, so I decided to make the short journey up to Liverpool, where I had decided to spend the night. So I've decided to stay in an Airbnb in Liverpool. I thought I may as well go check out Liverpool because I haven't been to Liverpool before, so it'd be really cool to go around the city, maybe check out some of the Beatles stuff. I'm pretty exhausted. It's about seven o'clock in the evening, so I've decided to uh, get a noodle takeaway, Deliveroo, so that's getting delivered soon. And yeah, I'm just gonna spend the rest of the night uh, charging up some stuff and having a look at this charging device I've bought. I think I'm gonna try and install that one in the morning. And yet I'm praying that that's going to work. So I've just got out of bed. I had a pretty average sleep, to be honest. I woke up loads in the night. Uh, just all these midgy bites I have are an absolute nightmare. Um, I'm just itching all over my arms, my legs, my back, my head. I might have to get something just to uh, ease the itch. I'm going to tidy up this room now because it looks like a bomb has hit it and then I'm going to try and fit this charger on the motorbike. Right, I'm going to have to be pretty quick about this because it looks like the weather is, uh, is closing in a bit. Do not want to be getting water on the battery. So this is the unit and we want to connect the red lead on first to the battery, to the positive and then the negative and then we should be all good. So this is the moment of truth. This is my power bank. I'm going to plug this into the charger I've just installed. Let's start up the motorbike and see if it works. So it looks like it is getting a charge, it doesn't look like it's that consistent, but I guess it just works better when you're driving, so I think we're just going to have to yeah, basically drive and see, see if it works. I actually just tried using this USB-A to USB-C cable, and that's actually getting a solid consistent charge, so I think that's the answer is just to use this cable here, and I think we should be good. Alright, so I've popped the cover off, and I've run these wires on the charger all the way up under some of the plastic work and then that comes through into the back of the tank bag we pop that open I've got the actual unit in there plugged into my USB-C cable which then runs into the unit So I've just got to Liverpool, I'm going to walk down the road and uh, try and find the Beatles Museum and check that out because I think that'll be pretty cool. Yeah, just uh, one adult please. Yeah. Thank you very much. You go through this door to the left and up the stairs. Cool, thank you. Thank you. So apparently the collection of the stuff here belongs to one of their longtime fans and a good friend of the band, so it's pretty amazing that he's collected, I'm assuming, all of this stuff. So 
it's amazing to think how far the uh, the Beatles came in such a short amount of time. It must have been uh, so overwhelming since they were just you know kids when they first started. Good to see some Kiwi memorabilia. With my Beatles fit secured, I spent the rest of the afternoon checking out a few more sites around Liverpool, when suddenly, I realised there was something missing from my experience. So I'm five days in and I still haven't had a pint, so since I'm in Liverpool, I might as well use the opportunity. I found a German beer house just up the road, so I think I'm going to uh, pop in there and grab a good lager. So it turns out it was only called a bear house because it's to do with uh, Jürgen, the Liverpool football manager. So they don't actually sell German beer at all. So I'm going to head back up to the Beatles area and try and grab a pint up there somewhere. After quenching my thirst after a hard fought start to the trip, I made the plan to head to the Lake District where the weather was looking promising for the next couple of days. I had found a campsite close to where I wanted to hike the next day, so it was back to the saddle and time to head north. So I think I'm just about there. I couldn't find the campsite on my GPS, so let's keep an eye out and see if we can see a sign. Back where I came from. Hello. Yeah, I'm looking for the uh, campsite. Yeah, for a yeah. Side farm is the one, yeah. Yeah, it should be. Oh, actually, I think it's back that way. It must be right in the middle of town there. There's a turn. Well, at least I know I'm not the only one having trouble. Right, I think we're on to something here. I'll just follow these guys. What a spot. With the campsite located, I had my tent pitched and set up for the next two nights. The trail next to my tent went straight down to the lakefront. I decided to head down so I could soak up the scenery and get a good sized dinner in ahead of tomorrow's five hour hike to Helvellyn Ridge. So it's the morning of day six. I'm feeling pretty fresh this morning. I had a really good sleep last night. I'm just making breakfast now and I've realized I've lost my spoon that I made dinner with last night. So I'm having to uh, eat my cereal with a fork. So hopefully uh, the spoon shows up sometime soon. I'm going to hike Helvellyn Mountain this morning. So I'm just gonna head into town in a little bit, grab some supplies and then yeah, start the hike and hopefully be up there for sunset if there is one and get some good shots. So I just went to wash my cereal bowl and then I suddenly had a revelation that I might have thrown my lost spoon in the bin last night. Basically I had all my rubbish in my cooking stove and I had my spoon in there as well. So when I threw it in the bin, I obviously forgot about my spoon. So I had to dig through a mountain of rubbish, but I eventually found it. It was a bit worse for wear, but I gave it a wash and it should be all right. Yeah. Right, so I'm all set to go up Helvellyn. I've got two water bottles, so that's two litres of water. Got two tripods, got my GoPro for some walking action. And then inside, <laughs> got my drone, a couple of lenses, a head torch, because I might be out there quite late, depending on if I get a bit of a sunset. Also, some dinner and some snacks. So I've started the hike. 
I just had a bite to eat before I left. I basically ate a quiche for two. So uh, I've had to loosen the straps on my backpack because I actually feel like I'm going to throw up. But at least I'll know that'll keep me going for the journey. I'm about 700 meters up elevation wise. The shoulders are burning, so I'm just going to take off this uh, heavy load of photography gear off my back and take a rest for a for five minutes. After a quick rest, I continued to striding edge, although visibility wasn't looking too flash. Hi there. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it's a bit foggy, isn't it? I'm hoping that in a couple of hours it might lift a bit. Yeah, yeah, so we'll we'll see what happens. This is for striding uh, edge, isn't it? Yeah, yep. all that way. All that way? Yep. Just so, straight up there? Yep. Yeah, oh, okay. There. All right, so that way it is then. <laughs> <laughs> Not too far off striding edge, which is where I was hoping to get some good drone shots, but uh, visibility is not so good, so might have to stick it out and see if it clears up. I've got all afternoon and evening, so there's no rush. All right, so we're at striding edge. I've put the uh, the big camera away now because I think it's going to be a bit of three points of contact going on, or four. So uh, yeah, we'll see how it is. Tomorrow. So I've reached Helvellyn Summit, however it is still foggy as hell, so yeah I'm just going to continue walking around to the next ridge, yeah see if it clears up a bit. I was going to stick around till 7 because that's when it was supposed to clear but it's not looking too promising but I'll try my luck, fingers crossed. An hour spent at the summit didn't bring me any luck. The fog wouldn't budge and it was getting late. I decided to head back down to the bottom so I could find myself a beverage and some fish and chips before calling it an evening. Mm -hmm. 